my presentation is, I'll be talking about musculoskeletal systems design, bio-inspired one, uh, and towards 4D printing. Uh, I'm from the University of Texas at Dallas, uh, the Humanoid Biorobotics Smart Systems Lab. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so this conference is all about uh, taking CAD files and fabricate functional product that can morph and show complicated shape. Uh, so the, there are many applications in this, as you all know, biomedical, the entire soft robots, and many things can be for disaster preventions, uh, like snake-like robots, things like that can be realized directly from CAD file. And, uh, and one of the, the key challenge in this case is that whenever you have multi-materials, in the case of musky, musculoskeletal system, we have both soft material, we have hard material, we have cartilage, tendons, fluids, and also besides, the, it's a gradient shape also itself, the musculoskeletal. So there are numerous challenges to address in this. So I'm going to talk about our, uh, our uh, effort toward this, these things. So like I said, the motivation behind, I've been spending at UT Dallas developing a humanoid robot that is about a size of a seven years old kid size in terms of height. And if you look at this robot that you see in the left side is articulating and showing uh, some kind of gesture to interact with kids, many applications in this domain. But the problem is when you fabricate these, the 3D print, for example, this one took 300 hours to fabricate and the joints are, uh, are not, uh, bio, bio, uh, not like the nature. Uh, and there are servo motors attached in it and there are many things that need to be done. And if you see the most advanced robots like the biometric Kenshiro and Konos, they are like uh, the real musculoskeletal skeletal like robot presented thus far than the most advanced robot like uh, uh, presented from, uh, um, from Boston Dynamics and other ones. So, so in order to realize such kind of robot, musculoskeletal system is a key, something that has tendon, muscle, bone, and so on. And this is applicable for robots also for inspection of uh, endoscope as well. If we can fabricate this functional device uh, 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 in effective manner. So my approach, our group, our approach in the past few years is that here is the schematic diagram we try to, to, to fabricate by 3D, 4D. So the first one you see, make a ball, two joint, ball and socket joint, which that is, encapsulated by some kind of capsule device, thin membrane, uh, which can hold some fluids uh, for as a lubricant. And the idea is also to make the bone structure like PLA, ABS, uh, add nanomaterial to make it stronger, nanofibers, nano, so this technology exists. So incorporate that to get strength. And here is a sectional view. And, in, and more importantly, add artificial muscle in the side. As you can see in D, artificial muscle can be added in the 3D printing process by many uh, few methods. One, uh, fluid field elastomer is one of them. Growing polypyrrole is another one. Or integrating muscles, like the presentation we had so far, like insertion of muscle after is the current technique by posing the printer. So. Uh, so we, we, we try to make this by a single manufacturing setup uh, in the last few years. And I will show you, we started first by making this ball and socket joint using FDM technique that ex is, exists and no problem. We can have dissolvable material at the middle, dissolve it and then make a joint, a ball and socket joint. So what, in, what new things we have done in this case is that we integrated artificial muscle, twisted and coiled polymer muscle by using um, silver coated nylon or nylon material, extremely twist and coil, uh, and we can form as, a, uh, as an artificial muscle like a shape Mary alloy. Uh, so this is recently introduced in 2014 and has great promise for soft ro robots and su such kind of musculoskeletal system. So we did that and integrate the muscle. Here, we integrate the muscle after fabricating this by 3D printing. So, and then uh, we can make different twisting, bending, and other motions. So, so we characterize that. So this is our first approach to make that musculoskeletal system. Just to give some background for those new to TCP muscles, look, the TCP muscles are uh, the extremely twisted and coiled polymer 
silver coated nylon material that that be, became as an actuator if you see stress strain graph compared to shape mary alloy natural muscle dielectric elastomer conductive polymer all the technologies this kind of material in terms of strain and stress is is good it's lesser than shape mary alloy but it is uh, uh, it is higher in terms of strain but less in terms of stress but it's higher than other technologies so it's it has imperative features because it has less hysteresis as well compared to shape mary alloy so that's why we start in integrating these things in the musculoskeletal system and try to make bio robots and, and stuff um uh, so uh, another thing in musculoskeletal structure is that you know the joint so making a hinge joint like this one revolute joint is easier in fdm techniques fused deposition modeling we've done that for these robots uh, but the insertion of artificial muscle is always a challenge. So we always integrate them after the printing. So what is the idea? What is the solution to do that? So uh, besides insertion after everything is fabricated, um, one way is to pose the 3D printer and insert, which we settled for, for the time being. Um, and here, here is the, uh, the video that you see when the musculoskeletal, the building block for uh, articulated robots uh, that w after we 3D print and this is the the center is silicon. This is ABS plastic. This is ABS plastic. We didn't grade the functionality, but this one is one solid structure. And then we integrate the the artificial muscle. When we supply electric current, it bends and it meets our goal. Multidirectional. It can twist. It can bend. So this is our uh, first approach. Uh, to realize uh, musculoskeletal system, and and uh, and 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 making one module easy in the previous approach. But how about if we cascade? If we cascade the module each, then there will be several challenges. So in one of our SPIE publication, we show that the entire process by molding technique takes longer time. Uh, but we go, we took this route because we do have soft material here, which is silicon, and we have the center part, which is this ball and socket, is ABS plastic because we try to mimic a bone, the real bone surrounded by soft tissue. So we followed molding technique and we cascade them by use magnet to attach them to create modular robots that can flex and show morphing structure. Uh, so. Uh, cascading is one of issues, and making soft and uh, hard material is another issue. So, <coughs> and we continue that in another publication you showed in advanced material uh, technologies that we inserted. We prepare hollow channel. The channel is should be also hollow channel, and then insert artificial muscle in it in order to make uh, a musculoskeletal system like this using TCP actuator. So uh, that's our first approach uh, we, we did, uh, but we've looked at recent also that in the literature, people start using femtosecond laser uh, to make artificial musculoskeletal system, like uh, the one we have earlier in the earlier presentation, the Geico 3D printing, and they used uh, two uh, polymer material uh, uh, so pH sensitive material and another passive material to make a, a micro size robot. So uh, this the area of musculoskeletal making my mi micron size is easier, but when you look at mesoscale is a challenge because of adhesion uh, between interface uh, and the involvement of multiple material. Uh, another approach for making this kind of system is the hybrid the hinge approach that has been presented by uh, by other groups uh, showing the hinge structure uh, uh, by using shape mary polymer but the issue for shape mary shape mary polymer that i have is that uh, in terms of the strength so why we went to the high uh, the twisted coil polymer is that because of the strength in terms of strain uh, SMP has best performance but uh, to to get higher lifting weight we we we, we consider the TCPs um, 
<clears throat> another approach we followed is how to make functionally graded because the nature the bioinspired joint is functionally graded so so we we made a structure by using the polyjet technology we functionally grade the hollow channel by making this uh, accordion shape and we made the from the so rigid material first and then gradiently reduce up to 0% so that it has some uh, F FGM uh, property at the joint. So by doing so, we fabricate uh, our uh, final uh, functionally graded joint and insert muscle then after. Uh, so we solve one issue, another issue will come, but muscle insertion is uh, became another issue. So let me show you this video showing the robot uh, uh, rolling. This is fully functionally graded joint, modular joint, artificial muscle is added uh, uh, after it's fabricated, after it's done. So we showed uh, a different complicated worm-like movement, which, which it can be used for endoscope application for medical diagnostics too, uh, <coughs> for this technology. So we, we, we try to come up with different iteration to realize uh, what I showed earlier at the beginning. And this is, here is how the top, uh, uh, from the top view, one can mount cameras in order to have endoscope uh, with a controlled geometry by using this technique. Now, again, I will say that this is published paper uh, in 2019, but one challenge we have is also the the reliability, so uh, the life cycle is limited, so it dies after some few cycles. So that's one area to address as well. And here is the sectional view of the one I showed, and here is the bending properties of this functionally graded TCP actuated uh, musculoskeletal joint uh, that has, uh, uh, what you see at the center is the ball and socket, you know, and the side is the soft material soft and hard material achieved by the advanced 3D printer. But this 3D printer cannot make very soft elastomer uh, greater than 1000 strain. So recently we made custom made silicon printer to mitigate that. And for that, we, <clears throat> I think you all, for Ali and uh, uh, Mahdi, you know this, this paper published recently that shows the use of highly elastic silicon elastomer. So that's our third approach. So what we did was to realize such kind of uh, multi-material morphing structure, we 3D printed multi-material, silicon first by, uh, uh, by, by using the ink and print. We can, we can do that easily now. And we, we also print PLA on the top of it. And we, one important thing we did like fabric, we add, some toluene fabric for adhesion because silicone is very soft and the PLA is very uh, rigid. So to have a good interface, we add that and then print all the way then add the artificial muscle by posing the printer for a while because our temperature here, silicone is about 100 degree bed temperature. And the we wait for some time to apply the silicone because it's silicone is, not that hot, so it doesn't affect the thermal response of the, the, the SMA, the, our TCPs. Then we add on the top of it after some time, then we get this kind of shape and showed morphing behavior after it's fabricated. This is our third approach. It's shown in this book chapter. <coughs> now, what is the challenge in this technology? The challenge is that we cannot fabricate the artificial muscle because the artificial muscle involve all this process. We use a fiber extremely twist to have this uh, helix shape and then retain its shape by applying straining like shape Mary alloy. Uh, we train the, the, the muscle to behave at certain stress and the strain. And then we can only insert it into the active material. So that's why the, the challenge of musculoskeletal using high strength uh, actuation material is a problem. So our uh, another approach, which is, can be considered as the fourth approach for musculoskeletal is that uh, we, uh, uh, instead of making uh, 
um, uh, cylindrical shape. Flat shape is easier. On a, a flat uh, print bed, print the board and socket joint and add fiber to strength to make it like a bone because PLA is less str stronger. So we add fiber into it and then print. You, you'd see the fiber inside here, but not really, but some of them you can see the fiber here that is uh, attached. And then what we do is we just put print again silicone. So if we start here, then the silicone will be attached along with the fiber. So it will add some strength for the musculoskeletal. So when we actuate this, then it will have a good, it will address some of the challenge in uh, interface adhesion, as well as we are getting bone-like structure like you see here, and we can get silicone material as well. So we can fabricate this composite material. Now, the next step is we just add the artificial muscle by putting some um, on the top of it. So uh, we have few more public work uh, recently on to address this. Uh, and we continue to look at other actuation methods as well that's suitable for the musculoskeletal. One of them is, uh, is uh, the one you see here in this slide, which is hollow channel. How about to create some hollow channel within the musculoskeletal framework that you can dissolve later and inflate or by hydraulic system. So if you provide uh, air pressure or fluid uh, like hydrothermal, the hydro, uh, uh, hydraulic actuation uh, can be another solution to mimic uh, like, uh, like the musculoskeletal. So we use sugar printing and dissolve the sugar uh, to make uh, the, the structure that I showed, the biometric structure. Uh, so overall, the best so far approach to mimic the uh, musculoskeletal is the one I talked about this slide. Okay, just I summarize the, my, my talk that uh, our group tried for the last few years, uh, a musculoskeletal, artificial musculoskeletal system that consists of uh, soft, hard material and artificial muscle for use in biorobots and biomedical device. Uh, we attempt functionally graded structure by adding fibers uh, by using advanced printer, but there are more challenge to address that I, I would like you guys to give me comments and any suggestions that you have. So um, uh, uh, the, the, the best approach thus far is to automate the insertion of artificial muscle, any kind of actuation after the printing or during the printing. And, and that will be a, a way. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions.